Well, I'm actually going to open this show on a positive note. Um, a lot of people have been asking me about this ongoing health situation, which I got hit with a double whammy. But yesterday I saw the new cardiologist, who was a young guy, who was very on the spot, who basically assured me that even though I have coronary artery disease, which, you know, is the plaque in the arteries and stuff like that, and I have a slight aneurysm in the heart, um, he basically said, you know, as long as I'm on, you know, the cholesterol medication, I'm okay. Um, it's for the aneurysm. It could have been there 10 years. It could be there another 10 years and not be changed. Uh, there's no way of knowing that. But basically, I got to go back, you know, next year for a recheck and see where it's at, you know, and do all that stuff. So he said, honestly, unless you have, like, major chest pains and shit like that, you don't have that much to worry about. Um, I just came back from... Uh, the surgeon who did the colonoscopy, and everything they took out was benign. Um, you know, I got a little bit of diverticulitis going on, but I had that before. That's why I lost 18 inches of colon a few years ago. But it's minor in the scheme of things, and you know, as you know, they said basically get rechecked in three years instead of five, and then they say after you're 75 they don't check anymore, which I guess you're gonna kind of who the fuck knows. As long as there's not blood pouring out your asshole, I guess you're okay. But uh, that's a positive thing, and I, again, I, I, I humbly appreciate everyone who, you know, reached out and asked me what was going on and was concerned about it. So it looks like I'll be around for a little bit longer, which is good. Um, another positive thing was I spoke to Gary Kent last night, and he sounded very up, and I just sent him a copy of the new Grindhouse Resurrection, uh, which um, there's no reviews in yet. Um, Bob Murawski, uh PM me last night about it, and I sent it to him, and he's he's really happy about it because basically I covered two of his films. Uh, Impulse is coming out. He's always had Cannibal Ferox, aka Make Them Die Slowly, but he told me that Bill Greffy was looking for me. Um, I Bill changed his number, so I, I gave uh, Bill the right number and called him up, and we were shooting the shit for a while, and he he seems to be in good spirits and. Uh, he wanted a copy of the mag because Impulse is his film and it's coming out in the special edition uh, shortly. So that was all good. So, um, yeah, things are sort of like, you know, in a world of negativity, which I was surrounded because of a lot of fucking situations, uh, I feel pretty good uh, right now. Um, met somebody who's cool. We've been talking and everything's good there. So, onward and upward. Um, when I did that Scalp Hunters thing, uh, somebody mentioned in the comments about McKenna's Gold. And, okay, I remember seeing this, but I had to go back and revisit it, and I'm like, oh, shit. Talk about a fucking train wreck of a movie. And this was a big budget movie, 1969. Um, I was cutting school, I guess I was in uh, junior, I guess junior, senior, yeah, junior. And uh, Big Al, who had dropped out of school because he was a couple of years older than me, uh, we meet up down at the Embassy Theater to catch this thing on a matinee. And this thing was shot in 35 and in, I guess, they said 70 millimeter or something like that. But it's a complete fucking train wreck. And it even looks like Gregory Peck is sleepwalking his way through it, which, after I did some research, it wound up that he basically hated the fucking movie. Um... Omar Sharif is enough, one of the leads who, uh, according to what I read on him, he, he, he got tired, his son got tired of watching him play a romantic lead, so he wanted to be a bad guy. So he's Colorado, this Mexican bandit. And the way this thing plays out is that Gregory Peck is a sheriff, and he is ambushed by this old Indian known as Prairie Dog, played by an Italian guy, Eduardo Cianelli. And he has this map that supposedly will lead you to the Canyon de Oro, the Canyon of Gold, where there's fucking gold laying all over the place. Nuggets, dust, the whole bit. So, the sheriff already had a run-in with Colorado years ago and ran him out of town. But he's back because the rumors of this map. And he has his gang. Now... I'm surprised the cancel culture hasn't found this film because his gang is half Mexicans and half Indians. The Indians are played by Ted Cassidy, Julie Newmar, and I think this guy, what the hell was his name? Philip something or other, but you'd notice the guy. He's a noted character actor. He's been in a bunch of shit. He was one of the, he was the bad MP in the Dirty Dozen. 
They are all playing Indians. Their skin is darkened. And um, Ted Cassidy and Julie Newmar's voices are dubbed in. The Mexicans are played by Keenan Wynn and Dick Peabody almost in blackface. Their skin is darkened. So they're on a hunt for this gold, and they basically grab the sheriff and are going to torture him and shit like that. But prior to this, they killed the judge and took uh, his daughter with them. So there's a whole bunch of shit going on with this. And there's also uh, a love interest between the sheriff and the Julie Newmar Indian character. So a bunch of shit going on here. Plus, there's also uh, what the cast didn't expect was there's a nude underwater scene with Julie Newmar who basically stripped down to the buff and did it anyway. Um, and it gets even weirder. There's a bunch of townspeople involved in this, led by Eli Wallach, um, Lee J. Cobb, Anthony Quayle, Raymond Massey, uh, Burgess Meredith, and they're being uh, pursued by a cavalry detachment led by this sergeant, played by none other than Telly Savalas. Like I said, it gets even more confusing. So, being that the sheriff had burned the map, Colorado thinks he has the map in his head. So that's the only way he can survive, and he trades him the captured girl for, you know, leading him to this Canyon de Oro. Well, the townspeople get involved, and there's a huge... Edward G. Robinson plays this guy named Mr. Adams, who had his eyes burned out by the Apaches because he was the only one who survived after finding the canyon. So he's along for the ride. So all these townspeople ride into the cavalry detachment that basically thinks they're outlaws and guns most of them down. The ones that don't get gunned down are taken out by a band of Apaches. So now the playing field's leveled down to basically the Ted Cassidy character, the Julie Newmar character, the captured girl, the sheriff, Colorado, and now the sergeant, Telly Savalas. And of course, they find this canyon de Oro, and it has got gold all over the place, but Gregory Peck says to the girl, we gotta get out of here, because there's gonna be a major falling out. They're not gonna let us live. So basically, at that point, Julie Newmar character had gotten killed because she tried to push the one girl off the cliff, but she wound up falling off the cliff. Uh, Ted Cassidy decides to kill the Telly Savalas character with a hatchet, and because he decides that the gold should stay with the Apaches. Colorado kills him. There's an Apache attack. It just sort of ends with the three of them going their separate ways. Like I said, it's a clusterfuck of a movie because in some scenes, it's either a rear projection or a superimposed image of like Omar Sharif standing behind it by a canyon wall. And you can tell it's whatever it is, and at one point, they're riding, and they're also superimposed, and it looks like a fucking Monty Python skit. So, and then the other thing was, here I am with Big Al, who's getting surly because this thing really sucks, and is like yelling out shit, and there was only maybe a couple other people in the thing, and they're telling him to shut up, and he's like, why don't you come over here and make me shut up? You know, that type of shit, so I had to deal with that. So, it's a weird-ass, really fucking all-over-the-place movie, and it's over two hours. And there's a lot of, like, desert scenes and shit like that. I mean, the, the, the final scenes in the canyon are impressive because you don't really don't know where the canyon is until there's some kind of a sundown thing where the shadows show where there's a hole in the wall to get into the canyon. So that is pretty weird. But not as weird as 1966's Navajo Joe. You see, Burt Reynolds and Clint Eastwood were close friends. And Clint Eastwood had Burt over one night and was espousing, you know, the talents of director Sergio Leone. I think he might have showed him, you know, one of the Dollars films, or the first Dollars film. So when Burt got an offer from a Sergio to go over and do Navajo Joe, he never even asked if it was Sergio Leone, because it wasn't. It was Sergio Corbucci. And basically... Corbucci and Reynolds did not get along. Bert had to wear a fucking wig. Uh, you could tell that Bert was not into doing this film, and he hated this film. It was the only spaghetti western he ever did. But in Bert hating the film, he elevated the second lead, Aldo Sambrell, who was basically a fixture in all these spaghetti westerns, and mostly all the high-profile ones. He elevated his star a little bit because... He's the most interesting thing there, as the bad guy Duncan, who leads a bunch of scalp hunters who basically wipe out Navajo Joe's village and kill his woman. So 
There's a bunch of stuff with the train robbery and him baiting the gang, and basically it starts out as a real big gang, and he pulls some shit where basically toward the end there's only like five of the gang left, and Navajo Joe picks them off one by one, and then it's just him and Duncan, and he turns his back on Duncan, and Duncan has a hideout gun and basically shoots Navajo Joe in the back a couple times, and Joe flips around and puts a tomahawk right through Duncan's chest. Um, of course, it could have been open for a sequel, but Bert was never coming back and never going to do another spaghetti western. So basically his character died. Um, this thing didn't even do well in the drive-ins because it was flipped on the bottom of a double bill with another import film, uh, To Kill a Dragon, with Jack Palance, Fernando Lamas, and Aldo Ray. And I got that poster somewhere around here. So, uh, yeah. But... Like I said, the whole thing was Aldo Sambrell was a fixture in most of these westerns, and this is the one where he basically was the co-star to Reynolds, and because of Reynolds' complete disinterest in hating being over there in the first place, he basically stole the, stole the show. And um, he had a long career. One thing he did do toward the end was this uh, ensemble cast called um, Men of War, or Men in War, with Dolph Lundgren, Tiny Lister, and a bunch of other characters, and he's gold tooth in it, and uh, that's flipping around somewhere on a DVD or maybe on Tubi or something like that, but it's well worth watching. So uh, that's our show for today, and again, I thank everybody who reached out for my health problems. I appreciate it more than you can ever know. And I uh, thank the new subscribers for tuning in. Thank the old subscribers for hanging out with us. And like I said, uh, if you're interested in getting Grindhouse Purgatory, you know, PayPal is Mr. 42nd Street Pete, MR42ND, street spelled out, Pete spelled out at yahoo.com. Or if you don't have PayPal and you want to pay by check, cash, or money order, uh, Email me at grindhousepurgatory at gmail.com, and I'll give you my mailing address, and we can hook it up there. Um, I think this thing turned out great, and uh, I just sent out all contributor copies and all paid copies yesterday, so I'm sure some people will be talking about it, you know, in the near future. And we're looking ahead for issue three. So until next time, thanks for subscribing, thanks for tuning in. Above all, stay safe, and we'll catch you on the flip side.